welcome back to my channel paper therapy with Amy uh, here is some papers I'm gonna use for the layout I'm gonna do today today is a little bit special because I am coming along for the ride to help Erin celebrate 20,000 subscribers so it feels like just yesterday I was watching her video that she had 10,000 subscribers but now she has 20,000 and so in order to help her celebrate we're I was asked by Erin to scrap lift one of her layouts. So I am actually gonna scrap lift her layout that she used this paper pack, which is Are We There Yet? And it's her Roman Coliseum page. Um, she had a flip flap in here and I'm not gonna use that. Um, and I'm, I'm even gonna use the same papers, but I'm gonna change up how I use them. So um, the photos that I'm gonna use today and this sheet here is the January March, March mix-in. So this was a mix-in that was at the same time as the Are We yet, There Yet paper pack. And then um, the pictures that I have are kind of fun because as you can see, Big Ben is on here. And I was in England and saw Big Ben with my husband. So these are the pictures that I have here, are some from different angles. And that's how I'm going to imitate uh, Erin's layout. So I will link the video down below of her layout. So just check down there for that. I'm just going to bring in my Versamats and I will be right back. All right, here is my um, white daisy that I'm going to start on. And I've tacked those down. So on Erin's layout, um, she had the uh, a full piece of... Um, this sheet with the icons of the famous places she had those in the center uh that sheet in the center and so she just had it bumped over i believe she had four inches here and then the other eight inches here but i am gonna actually use the same paper as her um this paper here that's in the on the side i'm gonna use that one but i'm gonna use that one in the center so i'm just gonna change that up a little bit so let's take that zip strip off there so Erin was actually my inspiration to start a YouTube channel. Um, I used to watch her and I just, I really enjoyed watching her and I thought, you know what, I think I could do that and I would get a lot more scrapbooking done. So I tried it out and you know, I've never looked back. So, so here Erin has um, four photos. I believe she has them a little bit taller, but this is the easiest way for me to print them. So I want them to kind of be framed on this side. I'm probably going to put a bit of a sapphire frame too. So that means that leaves me to about here. So I'll just, I'm going to flip that around because it makes it easier for measuring. Otherwise I have to flip that arm out. So let's say I'm going to do these here. And I want about the same distance. So four and a half, that means, and like that. So those are going like that, and these ones will be here. I'm just gonna move this aside. Now, um, Erin had a white background, but I'm actually gonna go with this background. And the reason being that it just looks so nice, these fit photos look so nice on this background. So I thought, um, I only have one sheet or I would have started on this, but I, I did like having a bit of a frame here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut four and a half off of this one and it's gonna go on the other spots, right? So the bigger piece will go here and the smaller piece will go here. So that's just a quick, easy way of um, starting a layout is just cut to slice two pieces and you can even like flip them one way and the other way. I'll show you in just a second. Do that. And then let's see. I'm gonna go four and a half again. that so now this paper here has a bit of an orientation with all the words coming this way but if it didn't you see how you could do one like this and one like this and this is like a quick background and all you have to do now is put your pictures on and embellish and you're done so this is a really handy way to cut two sheets and then if you only have you know how you often get paper packs not from close to my heart but from other places where you only have um 
one sheet of each pattern or say it is close to my heart and you really like the back side so you don't want to use up like you only want to use one sheet because you like this side and you really like this side so one of the options that you can do in that situation is this you you use some white daisy the background you slice your sheets and then now you have you're showing both of your favorite papers and lots of them so that's kind of a good tip for you now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bump this in and leave a little bit of a trim. So whatever trim I want, um, I need to take a little bit off the bottom. Now I need to take, I'm going to tuck this side under here, so that's no problem. But I need to take double whatever I want my trim to be. And I think I want my trim to just be that quarter inch. So that means I need to take a half inch off the bottom. So let's do that here. Now... We're gonna tuck this in like this. There we go. Okay, so let's bring Erin's um, layout back in. So she had a strip going across here. I'm gonna work on that in a minute. I'm gonna bring my photos in now and see how I like them on here. So Erin had one um, landscape and one uh, square so I could do something like this but I really would like to get this picture of me and my husband on here as well so I was wondering if I could kind of come in like this and there's so much sky it's just the nature of these pictures if you want the whole tower on then you get all this sky which is perfect London sky because it's rainy in the spring which is normal there I was thinking something like this and then um, possibly some embellishing like in the corners so but see how nice this looks on that um on that brownie background like it just really brings out the uh, warm tones of the buildings of these stone buildings now this one here i was gonna put like this but i thought you know you don't really need to see this side of these so it might look cute if i just tuck them in and because I print at home, when I print, it only gives me the white border in between. So then I'm stuck with no border on this one. On these, it's fine because it's just down the middle. So what I'm going to do here is um, just put this one like this. I kind of want to cover that, but I might cover it with an embellishment. And then I'm just going to have them tucked in like that. So that's kind of my photo placement. Um, and now Erin had a strip going across here and I kind of like this up against there. Now I'm not totally sure how I'm going to do my title yet. I do have the stamp that she used to decorate so I might do that here and I, I took this I have the um, ugh, my crazy son. Um, He's playing video games with his friends, but I had the option of the um, workshop kit, and so it came with this. So Erin cut herself a tag, but I think I'm going to use this, and I'm going to um, put it here, and I'm going to stamp Big Ben with the, with the little um, words Big Ben underneath. So I don't have to call it Big Ben, um, because it is going to be on there already, but I'm just still kind of thinking, like I'm in the sky here, maybe something would look nice. Like across here, maybe even like a, a swooping banner or something. Let me think that over. And while I'm thinking about that, I'm gonna show you, while I was in Great Britain, I got, um, I went into a little bookstore and they had these and I couldn't resist it. It's so cheaply made. It's not the best in the world. Um, this is washi tape. They're just not in here right now. They're here. Um, I don't mind how they look on here. Like I was just checking them out on here. And I think it looks okay. I would like, because they're kind of part of the memory of that I bought them there. I bought these actually in Windsor. Okay, so pardon me. I've got these ones here. I do kind of like the the flag and the hearts here. It's kind of neat because the flag's actually here as well. I think I was going to put these this way. Oh no, I think I was going to put them this way. <laughs> the flag is here and here, so it's kind of kind of cool. So this is the Parliament Buildings, and it's a big, huge square. So this tower is at the back corner right here. 
So it's quite, it's quite an elaborate building. I haven't actually been to Canada's Parliament buildings, so I think they're fancy too, although I don't think they're this fancy. So I'm thinking I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, to, to trim a few pictures and maybe put a little bit of banners and stuff around. So I might try this. Or would it be better to just tuck a piece? This is like makes me dizzy. I need an, only a very small amount of this, otherwise I get dizzy from it. See, this just kind of covers it all up. I think I'm better off just putting a little trim around the picture of me and my husband. So I'm going to try it. kind of reminds me of this, um, this. So I think it works. So I'm going to do that. So let's put that on there. And then... I'm thinking I will double mat it. So do I want to do red or blue? Oh, I like the blue, I think. This is just the close to my heart card stock. No, I think I like the blue. All right. So I like to repeat things on both sides of the layout. And since I don't, this is only a six by six paper pad, I can't really mat these four photos. So I'm just going to add a little bit of matting to the top right and bottom left of this four grid pattern photo. And you'll see how that makes the layout look more cohesive with having um, a mat in this kind of pattern on both sides of the page. I have been consistently inking around everything with toffee ink as I go. Once I got these two photo elements situated how I wanted them, I was looking at the layout and realized, oh yeah, I was planning to use the polka dot paper as kind of my background. So I still wanted to add in that famous places icon paper. You'll recall that Erin used that paper um, in the background of her Colosseum on the white. So the brown or the toffee colored polka dot paper is extra for me. But I really wanted to bring that in, as I said, because it brings out the warm tones in the stone of the buildings. You'll notice I often will concentrate on certain colors in a paper pack rather than using all of them. Sometimes I find it makes layouts really busy to use such a large color palette. So sometimes I'll just focus on certain um, colors in the paper packet and kind of avoid others. So this paper packet had some pink. I believe it was papaya. And also I think it had honey butter. And I'm kind of avoiding those bright colors in favor of trying to use this um, blue, red, and white kind of color palette that came in this little packet of papers I found in the bookstore. Now you can see I had that leftover piece and I was trying to make it work um, to go uh, alongside on the other side of the layout to kind of make it look like this piece came along both sides. But it wasn't really working so I decided to just add a little piece at the top and make that line kind of continuous across the top and um, kind of pretend it's in behind the paper there as well. I found I was going to cut it in that spot and then I found that that Eiffel Tower there was very distracting so I decided to try and kind of move it over so that Big Ben was kind of showing up more. So there's actually only three Big Bens that are going to show on this pattern paper in the background and I wished I'd been a bit more strategic about where they ended up because the one that ended up on the left hand side just beside my photos, it's the only totally complete one, it's kind of where I would have liked to put the title, but I ended up having to do something different because I really wanted to leave that showing. So you see here what I believe Erin has in as a yellow strip. I'm trying to put in as a blue strip, but I'm having trouble placing it because I don't want to cover that little Big Ben tower up there. So instead of worrying about it, I moved on to something I do know what I want to do. So I wanted to ink the edges and glue the pieces down. So I went with that and gave myself time to think about the rest. So I did think that maybe I should do a bunch of flags down here. I haven't, I was going to put journaling here and I probably still could. I don't need a ton of journaling. Let's see. 
So I really like how this is looking. So I decided to cut a bunch more flags of different papers and kind of combine all the colors as best I could there. And um, I really like how that kind of shows off those little papers that I bought in the store, but I don't have to use much of them. As I said, they're cheaper paper, but they're also um, just small six by six. So I just had to find a small place that I could put them in. Since I also had a little bit of space at the top there, I decided to mimic it so that it's in two different places and that seemed to work out quite well. I was also hoping to bring in a bit of washi tape, so I thought about putting it on some kind of seam or some kind of spot um, just to transition, but I found that, like I said, it kind of makes me go buggy-eyed this, this um diagonal stripe so I only like it in very small doses so I stuck it down to my paper trimmer and cut it in half so it's about a half inch so now it's about a quarter inch and then I tucked it under the edge of the page here a little bit more so only just a small tiny bit is sticking out and that left me with an eighth of an inch showing but I quite like how it turned out once I finished this I was thinking about my title and um, it took me a while to try and figure out how to place it. Uh, first, I used the thin cuts to cut out my letters. This is the serif uh, thin cuts alphabet, and at the time of filming, it is still available. I really struggled with placing this title. It just really wasn't working for me. I did not like it overlapping. Um, like seeing it on the video, it doesn't look as bad as it did in person, but I didn't like it overlapping on the picture and on the background of the layout and I tried it in so many places that I won't make you watch all that but in the end I ended up putting it on a tag. So don't pay too close attention to this part because I do end up dismantling it at the end and kind of toning things down because I felt like I really had to make this title pop more and I think I was just, it was too in my face and because later on when I looked at the video, I thought, oh, it popped fine on that tag. I don't know why I felt like I needed red in the background. So I did end up changing this up later on, but I'm going to leave the video in because I also did a lot of my other embellishments that I ended up leaving the same on this portion of the video. I had picked up this stamp set. It's from the Yesterday and Today card kit. Um, it was on an mega sale so I picked it up and I am going to be using the globe that you see there to the left of the um, layout and these little binder clips add a little bit of the toffee color into my embellishment clusters. I'm doing some sanding to this tag which I scrap lifted from Erin's video. She also sanded her papaya tag that she had on her layout. I had also bought the um, Big Ben little stamp and um, from the little um, stamp icons that were available at the same time as this paper packet so it has it's a mini stamp set and it has the big ben tower and it also has the little words big ben so Erin had the same element except for it was the roman coliseum and um, she added it to a circle as well i'm also going to add these swirling arrows because i just think they're really cute and um they will fill up my circle a little bit more since my little icon is quite small. So I stamped the arrows in toffee, Big Ben in sapphire, and the words Big Ben in, uh, I believe it was ruby. I was really happy the way this came out and I'll probably never use it again, but luckily I have a good friend that also went to England and saw Big Ben so she can use it as well. As soon as Erin asked me to be involved in her celebration, I thought about doing this layout. I remembered that she had done the Coliseum layout and used this little stamp and I remember thinking at the time that this would work well for my Big Ben photos. So I'm glad I got to be involved. I really liked how I was able to repeat the circle in two different spots and how I could dig into my stamps and thin cuts and punches and use all kinds of different things from my stash to finish off this layout. Um, it always feels good to use up your stash, I find. I hope I'm inspiring you so far to um, dig into your stash and do some scrapbooking. And if I am, I would just love it if you would hit that thumbs up button for me and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. 
so that you'll know every time I put out a new video. It's always so much fun to interact with you and I read all the comments and try to reply and I just love interacting with everybody on this platform. The tags and the binoculars and the swirling arrows all came from a stamp set that's no longer available that came out with this paper pack. It's a border stamp set. And this little camera came also from a stamp set in my stash. I think it was Hey Handsome. There's also quite a few embellishments that I took from the sticker sheet. So here is my finished layout. You will notice I did a little bit of surgery over here. It was just altogether too much. The red was bothering me, so I like it a lot better now. What I would have really loved is having the title down here, but I just didn't want to um, cover up my one and only big Ben that was on my background paper. So I chose to put it up there, um, which makes this spot a little heavy with these papers, but I also really wanted to use these papers in the layout because I bought them in England. So I just thought, oh, they're just ideal, and this is the Parliament buildings, and it just goes right and I like I literally have the double-decker bus on here I have a taxi somewhere I think right here one of the black taxis so it just kind of fit um Aaron's layout is right here so here is her first page and here's mine so you can see I have the same background piece here I just added a second one in um just because I wanted to have this brown paper in because I feel like it really shows cases the, the beiginess in the wood. The toffee paper showcases that. And then here's Erin's page two. Again, very similar background, uh, similar layout of photos. I added some photos here. Um, my photos are a bit smaller, so I was able to embellish more here. But of course, I couldn't do the embellishments she did here because um, I had two photos here instead. But um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed uh, my take on Aaron's layout. And again, Aaron, congratulations on 20,000 subscribers. That's amazing. And if I even get to five, we'll have to do this. And maybe you can steal my layout that I stole from you. So that would be fun. Anyway, um, we'll, uh, we'll have to worry about that when we get there. It might take a while yet. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll catch you all next time. Bye.